Let's do this. Woo! Yeah! Let's get all cranked up. Woo! <laughs> right there on that little square bill. Oh my goodness. All cranked up. You know, when it comes to the world of bass fishing, things can get pretty confusing. And I think we do that to ourselves for the most part. We may have created a monster here. Bass change patterns and attitudes like nothing else out there. They can be moody little fish, going from a frenzy to lockjaw in an instant. So to keep up and try to crack that behavior code, we keep on inventing more and more weapons in our arsenal. We got whopper ploppers, spooks, and jitterbugs. We got trick worms, speed worms, snakes, and senkos. We got hollow bellies, and horny toads. We got buzz baits, and uh, I don't even know what the heck this is. Do you think that just maybe we've overcomplicated things just a little bit? Sometimes we just need to simplify and start tossing what always works. Bass are trash cans and they eat a lot of things, but 90% of bass munchies will always be fish, bait fish. So why not throw a bait that looks like a fish. So let's do this. Let's get all cranked up. Cause today we're going all in on crankbaits. Honestly though, crankbaits are just pure bass slayers. There may not be a more effective lure out there that can cover a variety of waters as effectively as a crankbait. Nearly every area of a lake can be covered by some form of a crankbait. And there are several styles of crankbaits. From wake baits to square bills, lipless and medium divers, all the way to deep divers. These all fall in the category of crankbaits. There are hundreds of manufacturers and thousands of shape and color combinations. But today, we're gonna streamline it down to just three styles of crankbait that you should have in your arsenal. The square bill, the medium diver, and the deep diver. There it is. Seriously, oh, darky. <laughs> this is crazy, man. I was like, you should be out. Oh, oh, good one. <laughs> this is awesome. Oh, you, oh, you. oh, look at what he spit up, get that, yeah. We'll see what they're eating now. Dude, A little white bass. Chokes in that bait. Oh man, check that out. Wow guys, talk about choking a crankbait. Look at that. That's a crankbait down there. That's not a jig. Oh yeah. That is so sick. There is like a five foot by six foot hole that these fish are stacked on. And as soon as we bring any crankbait across there, they crush it. These are not small fish, guys. That's crazy. Hey. That's awesome, dude. Awesome. Sweet job. First, we got to cover the square bill. It has got to be my favorite crankbait of all to throw. And it's pretty easy to see where it got its name. This is the bill. And you can see that it's short, it's wide, and it's squared off. The shape, the length, and the angle of that bill are what determine how deep it's going to dive. The angle of this bill and how short it is will only create so much drag and resistance as you're cranking it down through the water. That resistance forces this to dive, but only allows it to dive to shallower depths. Now, every manufacturer has their own version and diving depths will vary somewhat. But for the most part, square bill crankbaits are gonna dive from one to two feet to four to six feet on average. That makes a square bill a must have in all our tackle boxes, because unless you're fishing a really deep rock quarry with steep drop offs, there's almost always gonna be shallow water that you can effectively fish with a square bill. But that's not all this little square bill does. It's not even the biggest reason why it's so effective. The greatest aspect to a square bill is how effective they can be around structure and cover. Crankbaits are all about bait fish imitating and reaction strikes. Square bills allow you to take that reaction strike to a whole new level. That wide square bill acts as a guard and will allow you to fish really tight up against structure like dock piling, stumps, laydowns, and even rock piles. When your square bill comes across structure like that, it almost always will hit the bill first 
deflecting that bait off in a different direction, creating a more erratic, dying, fleeing, confused bait fish action. That deflection, that crazed erratic action, is what will trigger some explosive reaction strikes, even from the wariest of fish. Of course, you can always just chunk and wind this bait on a steady retrieve. That will catch you some fish. But when you really target that structure and try for that deflection, that's when you will definitely see an improvement in your cranking game. A good square bell is worth its weight in gold. And it's very rare that I don't have some with me on every trip I take. There he is. He ain't like a freight train. Let's go. Woo! Ha <laughs> ha! On the square bell. Beauty bass, too. Beautiful. I was finding that little bit of structure and cranking it, bouncing it off it, and that's what got him. Nice fish. Nice fish. There it is, on that beautiful square bell. Gorgeous little fish. Gonna go about two, two and a half. Heck of a nice fight. Awesome. Woo! -hoo -hoo -hoo. Gotta love it. Now, the gear you use when you're cranking is extremely important. Crankbaits are different than most baits out there, and they will work best with some pretty specific crankbait gear. All crankbaits, no matter what shape or size, all have those tiny little treble hooks. So it's important to have a rod that has a good parabolic bend to it, a good amount of flex to it, but still a good amount of power in the blank. That soft parabolic bend is what's gonna help keep those treble hooks pinned in that bass's mouth when it surges, jumps, or even runs towards you. Too stiff of a rod or too fast of an action could actually result in pulling those hooks right out of that fish's mouth. I highly recommend a medium weight, moderate to moderate fast action rod for most of your crankbaits. I like to throw my square bills on something a little different than the rest of my crankbaits. You're gonna be targeting shallower water and generally from a little closer range. So I like a little shorter rod when it comes to my square bills. Something in the six and a half, six, eight, six foot 10 range is a great range to do. Medium power with a moderate fast tip. You need a soft but fast tip to be able to feel the action of that square bill, especially as it's deflecting off a of structure and another cover. The shorter rod's really gonna help you with accuracy when you're talking about shorter casts in tight areas. And when it comes to my square bills, I actually like to go fast on these. I like to use a reel that's gonna have at least a seven to one gear ratio, eight to one, even nine to one gear ratio. I like to move a square bill fast and I like to make the deflections off of that structure fast and erratic. Speed is a great tool to have when you're talking about square bills. Bigger deflections and faster moving bait. We're talking reaction strikes. That's what square bills are all about. And as far as the line they use for square bills, I gotta say, not much beats fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon has a little bit of stretch. It's got great sensitivity, but it has the abrasion resistance that you really need when you're working these square bills off a of structure. Typically, I'm throwing a 10 to 15 pound fluorocarbon. Right around 12 pounds is a great pound test of line to be throwing with these square bills. Oh yeah, we got a decent one, guys. Oh yeah, he's staying down there. Got him on the lip or on the square bill. Oh, he's a nice bass. Nice bass. Nice fish. Stay on, buddy. Oh, -hoo -hoo -hoo. look at him in that clear water. Oh, he's beautiful. Yes. Oh my God, he's barely hooked. Barely hooked. Just one hook. Get him in here. Get in here. Get in here. Yeah. Woo. Yeah! Woo -hoo -hoo! In that clear water, we just got a monster! Holy crap! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> right there on that little square bill. Oh my goodness! He's a beauty. I've been tossing just about everything, and we finally got a good one! Yes! There it is. Woo! On the square bill, there's a beautiful four pound bass. Woo-hoo-hoo! That is awesome. The next crankbait I have to have in my tackle box is gonna be your standard medium diving crankbait. There's a big variety of medium diving crankbaits, but essentially they're gonna be ones that dive a bit deeper than square bills, but not quite as deep as a deep diver. 
most crankbaits I would classify as medium divers are gonna go anywhere from the six foot to about 12 foot in range. Somewhere in that range is where I would put a medium diving crankbait. The differences are obvious between a medium diving crankbait and a square bill. They have a much longer and different shaped bill altogether. The bill tends to be on less of an angle sticking straight out of the end of that crankbait and will typically have an oblong shape to it, getting a little wider at the end than closer to the crankbait. Again, every manufacturer is gonna have a different style, a different style bill, and a different diving depth. Checking out the baits and reading the specs on them before you buy them is always a good idea. Now, medium diving crankbaits cover a huge variety of water. The farther you cast, the deeper it's going to dive. I typically like to target areas with my medium diver that's slightly shallower than I know the crankbait's gonna run. So I know as it dives down, it's going to bang off that bottom. Digging through the dirt, deflecting off rocks, and creating a ton of commotion. Looking like a very confused erratic bait fish, feeding off the bottom and trying like heck to get away from a big predator. That's where you get the reaction strikes and the best strikes. If I'm in 12 feet of water and I'm throwing a crankbait that only dies eight feet, I'm missing that bottom by quite a bit and more often missing the fish. Much like a square bill, that big bill will act like a guard and protect those hooks from most structure down there. If you can get your crankbait to dig to the bottom and deflect off the bottom, stir up the bottom, make a ton of commotion, that is going to increase your strikes and your crankbait game altogether. There we go. There he is. Well, that's a nice fish. I think that's my big one. Oh, stud. Stud. There it is. Nice. Dude, that's a stud. Woo. Look at how fat he is. That's <laughs> a football, dude. <laughs> Look, she is a football, man. <laughs> Look how round that fish is. Woo! There it is, though, guys. That crankbait is exactly what she wanted. Perfect. Talk about matching the hatch. There she goes. All right. Thank you, girlfriend. Whoosh! <laughs> Gotta love that. These baits create a lot of resistance and have a lot of action. You really wanna have a good crankbait rod, a rod that's very sensitive to feel all that action, but also have the bend and the flex to be able to support those tiny little treble hooks. This is where you're also gonna to wanna to go into a longer rod, somewhere in the seven foot to seven foot six range, because you're gonna to wanna to make as long of a cast as you can to get that bait to really dive down to really dig down as deep as you can. You need a good rod with a good amount of flex to really be able to load up when you make that cast and fire that bait as far as you possibly can. Cast King has come out with some really nice crankbait rods. Their crankbait rod is seven foot long. It's a medium weight with a very moderate action on it. So it's got a tremendous bend to it. But the real key to this rod is it's not your traditional graphite or carbon rod. It's a composite rod made out of 70% S-glass and 30% carbon fiber. 30% nano carbon fiber is mostly down near the base of this rod, providing that extra backbone and the extra power. But the sensitivity and flex in that S-glass is what makes this rod unique and special. A fantastic rod when you're talking about casting crankbaits a mile and really getting them to dig down and feeling every little thump. And when it comes to the reels on diving crankbaits, I really recommend going a bit slower. A five to one or a six to one gear ratio. That big slow crank is really gonna help you out throughout the day and when you're crankbaiting. Too fast of a reel and that bait really digs down and will wear you out throughout the day. With very little effort, you're gonna get that bait to dive down nice and deep, keep it in the zone where you need it to be to get all those good bites. You're actually gonna wanna go as light as you can on that fluorocarbon line. The heavier the fluorocarbon line, the thicker the line, and the more drag it's gonna create in the water, which will stop your bait from being able to dive down to the depths that it should be able to go. 10 to 12 pound fluorocarbon line is perfect for what we're dealing with here. Well, that's a fish. That's a, oh yeah, that's a nice fish. We got a decent bass here. Oh, stay hooked, stay hooked. 
That's a nice fish. That's a much better fish. Much better than the first one. Oh, yeah. He's a good one. Good one. Ooh, yeah. That's a beauty. Beauty. Yes. There it is. Yeah. Nice. What a beautiful fish. A big, fat, healthy, nice three pounder. Hammered it. Just hammered it. Woo, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, buddy. Thank you so very much. There he goes. <laughs> that was awesome. And finally, the last crankbait I recommend that everybody has in their tackle box is a deep diver. Deep diver crankbaits are exactly like they sound. They dive deep. There are mondo sized deep diving crankbaits out there that can go 25, 30 feet deep. What you're gonna see on deep diving crankbaits is a very big bill. They're generally a big body with a very big bill. Much longer than the average crankbaits and they're on more of an angle. That big bill will really dig into that water, creating a ton of resistance and driving that bait all the way to the bottom. Throwing deep diving crankbaits can be an incredible thrill. You want a giant, a donkey of a bass? Go deep. The biggest bass seem to come out of the deepest water sometimes. Especially in the summertime when that water is hot everywhere else and depleted of oxygen, those bass will go as deep as they can down into the depths. You're going to need a big, strong crankbait to get down that deep. When you're talking depths of 25, 30 feet, there's not near as much light down there. Things are a lot darker. A deep diving crankbait with a good knock to it is important to me. You want it to make as much motion and commotion as you can all the way down to the bottom to really get the attention of those big bass that are way down deep in those dark holes. Deep cranking can be exhilarating, but it can also be extremely exhausting. Those are big baits, they create a lot of resistance. You could end up with forearms like Popeye if you're not using the right equipment for deep diving. Deep diving is all about getting the maximum depth that you possibly can out of that crankbait. My deep cranking setup is a much beefier setup. Casking just came out with a brand new deep crankbait rod. It has a lot more beef in the blank, a much more powerful base to the rod and it's got a lot more length. In fact, it's seven foot 11. You wanna fire that bait as far as you possibly can to get it to go as deep as it possibly can go. The farther you can cast it, the deeper it's going to dive. So having a real long rod with that parabolic bend is going to help a lot. When that rod really loads up, you can fire it a mile. But like every other crankbait, deep divers still have treble hooks too. So you still need to have a rod that's got a good flex to it not too stiff and not too fast. You gotta keep those trebles in the mouth of that bass all the way up. And the reel is just as important. You need a good, strong reel with a low gear ratio. This bait will wear you out if you're using too fast of a reel. If you're using a seven to one, eight to one on a deep diving crankbait, you are getting your butt kicked all day long. On my deep diving setup, I've actually got the new casking cap stand. This is a 300 series bait casting reel. It holds a mile of line on it. It's a 5.3 to one gear ratio, so it's perfect for those deep diving crankbaits. And it has a whopping 35 pounds of drag on it. It holds a ton of line, it has tons of power, and at a 5.3 to one gear ratio, it is perfect for deep diving crankbaits. Yes! <laughs> he's, he's a good one too! Yeah! Check this out! This is awesome! He's got his mouth pinned shut. Sorry, buddy. In his mouth. You got double! You got a double! Oh my god! That is crazy! Amazing! What an amazing fishery! In 30 feet of water, by the way. This, this guy can't got me down deep. Buddy, that. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, dude. Oh my God, I'm on, I'm on. Cranking. My top three crankbaits that every one of you should have in your arsenal today. You're gonna be able to cover all the water columns from shallow to deep with these three crankbaits. All cranked up. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you learned a little something. 
If you did, make sure you smash the heck out of that like button. And leave a comment for me on anything else you'd like to see me film. I'll do my very best to make a video out of each and every one of those. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel. And stay subscribed, because there's plenty more coming in Sawgrass Bassin's future. One last time, guys, from beautiful North Florida, I'm Captain Mikey, all cranked up, signing out. The future is bright. You keep those lines tight.